Welcome back everyone to more from the Sable Eyes. I'm Mitch and today we're going to take a look at one of my favourite Pokemon in its best form in quite a long time. That is Hisuian Arcanine and this card is a really, really fun rogue option if you're looking for something that's a little bit different on the standard ladder. The attack on Hisuian Arcanine is very, very good. It's very vulnerable. For zero energy, that's right, for free, you deal 10 damage, which isn't obviously that much, but if you have zero cards in your hand, you'll be dealing 150 more. 160 damage is two-shotting almost every Pokemon in the game, so Hisuian Arcanine is a nice, stable attacker that can very, very easily pick up matchups against really difficult opposition. The card only works, however, if you can get an empty hand, so how are we going to do that? Well kind of counterintuitively, we're going to play a copy of Radiant Venusaur in the deck. The reason for this is sometimes we will draw into cards off of our prizes or the top of our deck that we can't play, but Radiant Venusaur will always at the end of every turn allow us to draw up to four cards into our hand thanks to the Sunny Bloom ability. It states once at the end of your turn after your attack, you may use this ability, draw cards until you have four in your hand. That gives us every chance to find some discard options, maybe the extra piece that we need to start attacking, and it's usually going to give you enough options to give you that Arcanine's attack for full damage. Now obviously it's not always going to work out, we might need to manipulate our top deck a little bit with Oranguru to try and reduce the cards that we have in our hand. Primate Wisdom allows us to do that, put a card from our hand to the top of the deck. That can be particularly useful to preserve maybe supporters or the single copy of twin energy that we run in the deck. So definitely a good option, but not guaranteed. One way though we can combo that card into a successful emptying of our hand is by using Tempting Tune Altaria. Altaria uses its ability to search its deck for a supporter card and put that supporter on the top of the deck. That in combination with Ranguru means that we can get access to any supporter whenever we want and there's one supporter in particular that's going to be very helpful for us and that is Peony. Peony discards our hand and searches for two trainer cards, which we can then use, empty our hand out, and attack. And you can see now, using these cards in combination means we'll always have cards in our hand with Venusaur's ability, we'll always have ways to discard them with Peony and Altaria, and we'll always have ways to save the extras that we don't want to discard with Oranguru. The only other really big issue that this deck has is we only run three copies of Arcanine. So in order to support that, we are going to be playing a 4-4 line of Phantom Transformation Zoroark. This card allows us to discard the Zorua and the Zoroark from play and replace them with a Stage 1 Pokemon from our discard pile. This means that we can afford to play some kind of funky lines of Stage 1s. We've got a 1-2 Altaria line, for example. But also it means that we can play some other Stage 1s in order to help us win games that maybe we wouldn't have been able to win previously. For example, Mightyena is a fantastic option in VMAX matchups, allowing you to attack for no energy for 160 damage, thanks to its ability Hustle Bark. In particular, it's very strong up against Mew VMAX, because it's a dark type, it will hit a Mew VMAX for 320 damage. That is a clean knockout. Also, if things go poorly and our opponent is in front, then we might even be able to use Twilight Inspiration with our Slowbro from Pokemon Go in order to take our last couple of prizes. Two energy, use this attack only if your opponent has one prize remaining, take two prize cards. It can be a very, very clutch way to win some games. And that's the reason, of course, we're playing the one copy of Twin Energy. But we also play peers that can help us search out that twin energy in the late game, but also gives us access to more copies of Zoroa and Zoroark, which I really like. And we also have a bit of an issue in taking big one prize, oh, two prize knockouts in one hit that can be mitigated by cards like Echoing Horn to pull out Crobats from the discard pile 
put them onto the bench, and then knock them out with copies of Cross Switcher. We have a couple of those, as well as one copy of Boss. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. The deck is obviously not perfect. There are some genuine issues, and Arcanine is not always going to be able to beat the top tier decks. But if you're looking for something that's a bit fun that you could take to your local league and muck around with on the side, then Arcanine is 100% a deck I can recommend. Let's jump into some games with it and show you exactly how this card is going to work. Time to get started, and we are playing up against a Mareep here. Not entirely sure exactly what our opponent is playing, but if they have got a deck that's weak to fighting types, that is going to be fantastic. We're just going to set up our board here. We've got a Swablu, a Growlithe, we've got a Zoroa as well. We'll end the turn and we'll leave it at that. A very nice board, uh, but not a particular convincing one. Um, not entirely sure, of course, what we're up against. If it's something that's weak to light, uh, weak to fighting, like Zera Aura V-Star, perhaps, then we will be in with a pretty good chance of being able to win. If it's something else like Rayquaza V-Max, then life might be a bit more difficult. There is Zera Aura, so maybe we have a chance here. Um, and we, uh, we probably have a couple of turns to do it. Two Cancelling Colognes and Amani, so we'll be looking at some fresh cards here. Talking about fresh cards, these Gengar Slaves are really, really cool. I think they are uh, probably one of the coolest sleeve options that they've released on Pokemon TCG Live so far. Um, they are, of course... Uh, for 2022 Halloween. Let's throw this Zoroa down here. Um, we can Stormy Mountains just have a look and see how many Pokemon we have. We've got three Arcanine, so we should be okay. Let's scoop up our Zoroaura, throw the Growlithe into the active, uh, and then we can Peony and try and find ourselves a couple of cards. I like Level Ball. I like Evolution Incense as well. Let's just double check what we've got here. All right, we've got, a, we've got plenty of options. Let's grab the Evo Incense. And we'll be able to thin out our hand, give ourselves access to an attack for Knockout. We could also level ball here for a Manaphy to stop our opponent from being able to snipe our bench. I'm not 100% sure whether the Zero Aura is likely to do that or not next turn, considering there's only one Mareep in play, but it is worth being safe. So we will do that. And we get the peony off the prizes. So that makes our life way easier as well. Very happy with that. So, we will sunny bloom, draw some cards, and let our opponent have a turn. We'll see how it goes. Now, we have pre-releases coming up this weekend, if you're watching live. We've got Silver Tempest starting soon. So do not stress, you will be seeing some brand new cards on Pokemon TCG Live as soon as we have access to them, including a couple of really cool options when it comes to extra typed attackers. I like the new Rapidash. I like the new Lugia. That looks really, really cool. I'm a big fan of Reggie Drago, although I'm not sure it's going to be as good as some people are suggesting. I think there is a lot to like about the upcoming set. And considering the fact that it's the last set that we will receive before the brand new Scarlet and Violet set comes out next February, it's probably going to have quite a few really nice character arts as well. So keep an eye out for those. We'll wait and see what happens uh, in the coming weeks. But I'm very excited. I'm actually, as I'm recording this, playing in a pre-release tomorrow. So very, very excited there. Now, we've been given a bit of an awkward hand here off of the Marnie from our opponent, but the most important thing is we have access to a scoop-up net and a Swablu. We can ultimately... Oh, that Arcanine's kind of a little bit difficult. Let's Ultra Ball, I think. We're going to do that. We're going to Ultra Ball here. We're going to get rid of the Slowbro and the Arcanine. We'll get rid of those to grab ourselves a copy of of Zoroark. We could have gone for Altaria there um, to guarantee the supporter, but if we'd done that, then we wouldn't have access to an attack this turn. Luckily, we can get the Phantom Transformation off and click on that Arcanine. This is very, very nice. And Zero Aura V-Star is weak to fighting, so we are going to be able to take a knockout here. We just need to make sure that we empty our hand out. Let's chuck a Zoroa and a Zoroark back in the deck. So we've got access for those next turn. 
Uh, we don't have the uh, we don't have the Altaria yet, which means we can't guarantee a supporter. But we can take a knockout for two prizes and try and grab ourselves a solid turn here. And those two prizes are very very good. Is that the second time we've gotten Peony off of the prizes? We're <laughs> doing very well here. We're getting very lucky. Peony off the prizes and a Zero Aura plus a Quick Ball and a Battle Pass means that this hand is going to be very easy for us to play down. The big concern here is that our opponent theoretically could, in the next couple of turns, get a really big Zera or a V-Star attack off. We know that they play the Cancelling Cologne, which means that a boss into Manaphy and Cancelling Cologne will take a lot of knockouts on our bench. They'll be able to use their V-Star power to ping a lot of damage to our Pokemon. So hopefully we can avoid that. Um, and at the moment, we're looking really, really good. That Marnie's frustrating, but we should still be fine. We've got an Evo Incense, a Zoroa, and an Ultra Ball, so we should have enough cards to get going uh, this turn. I think that's, again, guaranteeing us that we do have access to a knockout, or at least an attack. Uh, and the Ultra Ball also gives us access to Altaria if we want it. So we've got lots and lots of good things to do. Uh, we will wait and see whether or not we need to do them. Obviously, keeping the Radiant Venusaur in play is quite good, because that means we're always going to be drawing cards. That is pretty much the only thing that this deck needs to do, is just to make sure that it has enough cards, enough items in its hand, enough access to supporters, that it can clear its hand out and take knockouts throughout the game. Here's Crushing Beat, another knockout for our opponent, uh, but it's not going to be enough to stop us from attacking again, and we're actually going to go down to two prizes this turn, provided, of course, that everything works out as we intend it. So, we'll wait and see what our opponent selects with their prizes, and then we'll go from there. I really actually like these Gengar sleeves. If they keep doing these kind of yearly event sleeve situations, I think that's a really, really cool way of... Uh, kind of rewarding players for playing early. Obviously, some people won't have access to them, provided that they are a limited time thing, because the because uh, the beta obviously isn't available everywhere. But we do know that that beta is coming by the end of the year. So if you're watching this and you're asking, when can I play Pokemon TCG Live? It is before 2023, or at least that's what the people at Pokemon are claiming. Um, we could grab... What do I go for here? I think the Altaria is the best way to go here. If I put that Altaria down on the Swablu, it means that we're guaranteed to be able to get a good supporter next turn. We will once again use Zoroark's ability to get a new Arcanine in play, then tempting tune with our Altaria to make sure that a copy of Peony finds its way onto the top of the deck. That means here with our very vulnerable attack, we will take a prize or two with the knockout, and then we can go into our Peony next turn to guarantee that we can empty our hand. Because at this stage, the only thing we need to do next turn is empty our hand and get access to a Zoroark. And you know what? Peony is going to do that. Um, it is likely, of course, that our opponent does go for a Marnie again. It's the only supporter that they've really been playing in this game. So if they go for it again, we will need to find another way to discard our cards in hand. But we have Altaria now, so we've got a little bit more flexibility. We've taken Oranguru out of the prizes. So now we can theoretically find a Peony out of any situation. And worst case scenario, we can just chuck the Altaria in the active, use it as a pivot because it has free retreat, and hopefully find ourselves in a position where we have enough cards to take a knockout. I will say this much though, Roxanne is going to be quite a frustrating card if we see it. I don't know if our opponent's already played a supporter or not. They have a lot of cards in hand for a person who hasn't played... Oh, uh, who has... has a little bit of words hard. Who hasn't played a supporter. Uh, we'll wait and see what they decide to do. Ultimately, though, we are in a very dominant position here, being assisted, of course, by the fact that we are hitting for weakness. So we have to accept that, you know, it's not always going to be this clear cut. Um, another Zero Aura coming down. They've got two Flaffies. Can they find another one? 
to create some real chaos and place a bunch of damage counters. I don't know if it's even possible at this stage for them to do that with a boss's orders. Um, it's going to be difficult, but they, they're going to try. They're going to try. They're going to try and do it. Here comes the Dynamo. All right. Beautiful. We are cruising along. It's looking good. We should be okay to very vulnerable next turn. Of course, it depends on what our hand looks like. If it, if it looks like this, we're looking pretty solid. Uh, if it doesn't, then we are in trouble. Here's the boss. They go for the mana fee. Is there a cologne? No, there is not. Just a crushing beat. So that is going to take a knockout on the mana fee. And uh, it's going to give us a free attack with this Arcanine here. All we have to do now is click the Peony. And we will... Oh, we've top decked another one. All we need to do is click Peony. Click done. We don't need any cards. And then we can very vulnerable. We've managed to win, obviously, a good matchup for us here. But definitely shows off the consistency with which we can get attacks off with Arcanine. You will regularly be dealing 160 damage and for zero energy at that. Into a new game here, and we've had a weaker start than our last one, but still definitely workable, and we're up against a mill tank, so potentially a Blissey deck here. Um, that could be difficult to work with. Wait and see. We've got a level ball in our hand, and we also have a Peony on turn one, which means that we can not only get access to a card or two, we can actually Peony for double VIP Battle Pass here. I think it's probably the right idea. Let's grab ourselves a card that we might not want to have in our deck that we're going to discard with Peony. We'll put the Artaria in the discard pile because I want that later. And then we can double VIP Battle Pass. And this is a very strong start. Okay. What cards do we need? I think we need Growlithe. I think we need Venusaur. I think the last two cards are going to just be Zera Aura here. I think this is perfectly fine. Now, because we're not attacking this turn, I'm going to Rose Tower, draw a few cards, and we've been given a very, very interesting little hand. Um, I like holding the level ball, um, just in case our opponent takes a knockout, um, and th this has become quite something. This is... This is a very impressive set of cards. Actually, it might be difficult for us to discard these now that I'm looking at them. If we find ourselves in a position where our opponent takes a knockout, we might actually struggle to get the KO ourselves. And that Avery is not fun. We'll get rid of a Zorua and a Growlithe here just to give ourselves the options. Now at least we can play a couple of these cards, but it's still not ideal. Not ideal by any stretch. Uh, also, I just, you know, the, I figured we're at that point, again, where the people who actually care are still here and the people who wanted to see the list are, are well gone, they've just disappeared. When it comes to viewing lists, I personally don't necessarily like the way that Live presents deck lists. Um, so I was wondering whether you would be happy for me to show it externally. Like, I mean, I'm probably going to be fine to do it. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm probably going to just do it anyway, to be brutally honest, it doesn't really bother me, I'm probably just going to do it regardless, but I would love to hear your feedback. Let's Primate Wisdom, the Echoing Horn to the top here, Scoop Up Net is not necessarily a bad card, it's not a good one, but it's not bad at all, um, we now have Orangaroo again, let's go for the Rose Tower, we're going to see three more cards, um, we have, pr actually, oh, I I've clicked Primate Wisdom already. What I should have done. Oh, we got the Peony anyway. Oh, I'm a god. How does it happen? How does it happen? I was about to say, I clicked the thing accidentally. Probably should have just gotten access to the Peony through Altaria. But now, since we have Peony in the hand, we can do pretty much anything we want. And now we're being spoiled for choice, really. I think I just want to thin some cards out, frankly. I don't think that there's any uh, real issue here. We do want to take knockouts on Blissey's quickly, because if that Blissey gets a Dunsparce down, that's going to be very awkward for us. 
Uh, we're running out of time here. I'm gonna just grab... Let's just grab, like, a card that we can discard, like a level ball. We'll just thin that out of the deck. Uh, and then we'll just throw the Ordinary Rod. We want the Growlithe and the Zoroa back, I think. So we'll put those back into the deck uh, with the Ordinary Rod. And then, since we didn't use the Altaria before, which we probably should have done, we can actually elect to turn our Zoroark into one if we would like. I will just thin that level ball out. We don't really need to worry now. We can simply take the KO and hope that next turn the four cards we get from our prizes and Venusaur are good. If they are, then we have access to attackers, we have access to all of the things that we could possibly want. And the best part here is, if we do get knocked out, which I'm not actually sure is possible from a bussy at this stage, but if we do, we have a backup Zoroark, which I really, really like. I can really stop using Averys, that would be great. Um, we're gonna get rid of the Arankaroo and the Swablu. That's very frustrating. Um, but we should be in a good position from here. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, I'm considering doing like a different way of presenting uh, decks and deck lists and stuff so that people can see a little bit better. Um, one thing that I would like to do is uh, have like a focus on the cards and then have the text of the cards come up a little bit bigger. So it might take me a bit of time to edit, but I think it would be better in the long run. It's actually very similar to how a couple of other Pokemon TCG YouTubers do it, in particular Popsicle Knight who is a, uh, is a favourite of mine. If you've not checked out their channel, then I would definitely consider going there. Um, Popsicle Knight does a really, really good job of going over deck lists, so I'm uh, going to use his method as inspiration, I think, because, you know, the best, uh, the best form of... Uh, Flattery is copying or whatever it is. <laughs> it works. It works really well And I think it's got better potential than the system that I'm currently using with Pokemon TCG live Hopefully it gets updated in game so it's a little bit easier to show off But I think that would be a good way to go about it from my point of view. Uh, now we're going to grab ourselves a Altaria from our Zoroark. Now we have the Growlithe, we have the Zoroark. We can put the Peony on the top of the deck and not feel worried that things are going to go poorly. We've managed to take a knockout on Blissey because our opponent has not found Dunsparce. So that is a good thing. And now we are absolutely cruising in this matchup. We should be fine to win this game from here, as long as all things are equal. Obviously, a Dunsparce from our opponent will create a very awkward situation where we're only dealing 160 damage to a Blissey, and they will be able to heal it quite quickly. But that, of course, does rely on our opponent finding Dunsparce, and that hand is not going to do the job. Um, Cape of Toughness onto the Blissey is completely fair and reasonable. Then a Quick Ball. Could this be finding the Dunsparce? It finds a Mill Tank, so the Dunsparce must be prized. Either that or it's not being played. Um, lots of Mill Tank decks, uh, Blissey decks, not playing the uh, Dunsparce. Because, honestly, why would you? At the moment, you don't need to. There's not that many fighting decks out and about, so you probably don't need the Weakness Guard. And, to be brutally honest, it might come down to uh, being the thing that loses Blissey the game here. I'm going to go for the Double Cross Switcher play. Peony for Double Cross Switcher gives us access to a KO on the Blissey. We put the second Arcanine in the active. We can use Altaria's Tempting Tune to put another supporter on top. I like the Peony. And then we can very vulnerable for 320 damage, take two prizes and put ourselves in a position to win the game next turn, provided, of course, that we can get our hand down to zero. Now, we should be able to do that because we have access to Peony on the top of the deck, but a Roxanne would actually be really quite bad here. We don't have a good way of dealing with that. Um, luckily, Miltank and Blizzy don't tend to play Roxanne, so we should be okay. Armani is not a Roxanne. That guarantees that we win, because we will draw into the Peony that we put on top of the deck. So we are looking really, really good here. A route from our opponent is not enough. The Peony, again, will win us the game, will discard the hand, and attack 
for 160 damage times two into the mill tank 320 very vulnerable gets the ko there you have it. I, I really wish we played against some stuff that didn't have weakness, but it's about showing how the deck works as opposed to showing the deck winning. And it worked both games really quite consistently. So I would 100% check this one out. It is super duper consistent. So thank you very much for getting all the way to the end. If you are one of those people that did that, then you are an absolute legend. I could be speaking to no one at this point and I wouldn't be surprised. But if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. If you've watched all the way to now, you probably like the stuff. I mean, you should like it. Click the like button, and if you want to support the channel, there is a whole bunch of people over here who are doing a great job of being channel members. Thank you very much for all of their generous support. There is a little button down the bottom that will allow you to join for as little as $3 a month if you're interested. Obviously, no obligation, but what you should do is click this. It's Blissey. It's the deck we just beat. It's pretty good, and it's free. You should try it out.